Hello everybody, this is Richard Cespedes and uh, I wanted to put up a video talk about um, the problem with uh, of entertainment and where it's going and uh, the quality of storytelling and music, entertainment, um, storytelling, uh, everything, movies, TV shows, uh, comedy, everything. And, and, and I wanted to talk about the 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 declining quality and not just the quality but it's more like the quality and the fusion of the creativity and uh, I was just thinking about um, the problem with uh, with with comedy specifically I want to start with comedy comedy itself is uh, um, you know uh, the, the problem with comedy is that is that uh, people have to think of things that make them laugh and they have to think of things that make, will make other people laugh, and they have to think of things that are that are hit close to home. I mean, here in America, we have to think of ideas that connect to other people, that hit close to home, so that they can relate to it and laugh at it. That's what comedy is, you know, like like in a nutshell. And the thing is, though, is that um, um, they, like like the like for instance, uh, homosexual remarks and, and homosexual comedy, uh, not 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 homosexual comedy. But when a, a a comedian makes a joke about homosexuality, nowadays you just can't get away with it no more. You can't do any. You can't really do anything no more. You you can't really explore um, ideas to make people laugh. You can't really. You gotta tiptoe a lot with homosexual uh, punchlines because even on television shows or in movies, people have to tiptoe around. And they can't explore and they can't be free because when you try to say something like uh, kind of slightly negative about homosexuality or the awkwardness of it, you, you get criticized and you get shunned and you get um, a lot of people angry with you, especially when you're a famous comedian or a famous writer or you make a movie or a TV show and you have those elements in it. You can't, you can't really say what you feel because if you do, then people are angry with you. So the thing is, though, is that Comedy itself, it it's suffering a lot. Comedy, comedy, music and movies and stories, stories and cartoons and things like that. They're suffering a lot because, because of uh, the the modern era's perception of the rights movement and all stuff. It's hurting a lot because comedians, you know, um, they can't say what they want. They they can't they can't just let loose. You know, not not like they used to, because comedy back in the '90s and '80s was always like you were. Sh a sh it was um, uh, people didn't want to hear about it because it was kind of embarrassing back in those days, and it was kind of like you know pe people just didn't like it. But if you did it right, like The Simpsons did, you know, um, the The Simpsons did it right, um, and they didn't show no hatred or anger toward them. But but they did make it funny, uh, because they made Bart seem as though he was gay, and then they had the gay steel mill. And when I was a kid, those types of things were really, it it it, it really was funny. And the thing is though is that when you're a kid, and you make fu see like it, it happened to me when I was a child, and it happened to maybe some other people when they're young, that homosexuality is kind of like it it creates like a kind of sense of a of giddiness. Of kind of like you know, like you know, uh, like kind of like uh, looking at others, kind of like you know, they're, when you're a kid, look at them, they're gay, you think they're gay or something, and and, and it creates kind of like a sense of a uh, giddiness and a kind of sense of a, uh, it gets you through your life and it gets you kind of like you know, it was just kind of like, you know, it it it, it was just uh, something to just feel and, and 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 homosexuality was like a surefire hit, even the talk amongst friends. Or to to mention it in radio talk shows or something, it was always a surefire hit to make people laugh, to make people listen, and to kind of get the giddiness of of like people that were in the closet or people that had latent homosexual attractions. But the thing is, though, is that you know, in my opinion, that males looked more uh, cuter when they were kids, and then when they grew up, it's like a total uh, monstrous transformation. Like they look like two different people. But that's just my opinion, you know. And I could go on for that, but uh, and 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 the thing is though is that uh, 
is that it, it, it like uh, like like for instance um like on Family Guy you have a uh, you have um you have a a a a pervert a pervert you know uh, back in the day they used to make fun of gays in the nineties and eighties gay stereotypes now people look back on it and 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 in the year 2030, people are going to look back on the 80s and 90s and early 2000s stereotypes of gays, and they're going, to, they're going to be like, "Why the hell did they do that? That was very negative." And Herbert the pervert, who's like a pedophile old man that's creepy, you know, um, he he works for the era, you know, because you have to explore different avenues. F Family Guy is like funny, uncomfortable, eccentric, strange. Um, uh, it makes you angry, it makes you laugh. It, you have to do that because a modern era ex expects it when you're doing a show because everything's been done. But besides that, Herbert the Purpose is a pedophile. In the, in, in, the, in the middle of the lifespan of the gay rights, in the middle of, before the gay rights, you know, before the gay president gets elected, the pedophilias, the pedophiles of the are trying to get their rights going. And then when people, you know, succumb to it and they just let it happen just like they did with the gays either they're going to look back on herbert the pervert family guy episodes they're going to be like you know why did they make fun of pedophiles and why do they do that and and, and and you know it really hurts it really hurts uh quality of past entertainment because in that time era it really did something it really grabbed people it really made people notice just like tilson the crypt i have this one episode of uh um of uh, um death death of some salesman and there was a salesman guy and then he went to the house i'm just gonna get straight to it he goes to some house and there's these three people and there's this actor who plays three characters just like uh, eddie murphy with the facial prosthetics and it's the actor that plays it from stephen king from the 90s show and everybody knows him the rocky horror uh, uh horror show whatever it's called and 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 he played uh the devil of uh of uh, uh, the one movie with Tom Cruise in the 80s, I forgot the movie of it, uh, the name of it. But uh, um, the thing is, though, is that uh, there's a scene in the because they're playing with the the salesman and they're messing around with him. And there's this scene where the 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 the, the guy, the character plays of the the daughter of the three of the two mother and father, and they're having sex in the show. And like I can just imagine that back then. It was very uh, eccentric and weird, and it was different to have this guy dressed up as a woman, act like a woman, have sex with another man, and was ugly. You know, it was a cross-dresser. People thought to themselves, well, you know, this guy sounds like, this, this woman seems like a male, he talks like a male. But it was an actor dressed as a woman at performing this thing uh, in the show. And, like, back then it was, like, it was just multiple things that made it strange. A guy who dresses a woman, cross dresser, was ugly, and uh, you know he was gay. Or it, it, it was just dynamic back then. But people now, when they look back on the show, they can't enjoy it like the people did back in the day because they're gonna look back and say, you know what? How can I enjoy this now? Because how can we enjoy the gems? How can we enjoy anything when things mess things up? When the modern era, the rights and all this stuff and political correctness hurts the humor. That was intended for, for, for the entertainment, for the thing, for the medium in which you're listening or watching. You know, now when people look back on the episode and they watch this guy acting as a woman dressed up in prosthetics, the the some guy in the future is gonna be watching this episode one day, and he's gonna be married to a guy that's a cross dresser that's gay and isn't too attractive, and they're gonna look at that and they're not gonna find the humor or they're not gonna find it, it interesting. Because that guy is living the life of the guy being harassed in the movie. So that see that 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 just messes up everything. The originality and the quality of storytelling in the medium of movies and music is already deteriorating. The best stuff has already been done. If you look at all the heterosexual music, you know, you just cannot uh, you cannot uh, the, the gay people cannot make another. Um, love song sound as dynamic as a heterosexual love song of the 80s and 90s they can't do that because it was the instrumentation it was the arrangement it was the passion of the time it was the era people actually had time it was original for that era it, the quality was different you know it was written it had it, it had a better feeling it, you know like 
You just can't recreate something new and expect it just to force it to work. But of course, people in the, in the future, they're going to make it work because they're going to uh, self-manipulate themselves and allow themselves to just let things just kind of let things go and just let it happen. And that really hurts everything. And I hope that you understand what I'm talking about and I only have a few 10, 11 minutes to tell you, but that's my idea, you know? That as time passes, we're going to look back on, on the 80s and 90s and the 20th centuries work of television music and movies and books and we're gonna look back and say why were we so uh hard why didn't we just let ourselves just go and just explore and just instead of being trying to be political correct or trying to trying to you know we could have been just as good as the 20th century if we just were not so narrow-minded and trying to be so limiting but there's no way because we can't do that again because if we try to be like them, we'll be unoriginal. So we're screwed either way. You know, entertainment is done. There's no way that we can survive it. But either way, we're going to find a way to, to switch it around and just manipulate ourselves to just believe that, it's, that whatever is new is new and it's good. Whether it's not, we're not going to even know how to tell what's good or not. Thank you very much, Rika Cespedes. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Bye.